Hi, we get lots of questions here at SailRite, and one of the more popular questions that we hear is what type of seam should I use for my outdoor canvas project? Uh, there are really three common seams that are used. A simple overlapping seam, a semi-flat felled seam, and the full flat felled seam. We're going to show you each of those seams and discuss the merits of each. This is blue, uh, Pacific Blue Sunbrella material, the outdoor uh, type. And uh, I have a soapstone pencil here uh, for creating some marking on the fabric. And then we also have uh, one of our staple products, uh, something that's extremely important, so important that the part number has sort of become infamous, which is part number 129. It's an acrylic basting tape uh, to be used inside seams to hold seams together prior to sewing. I'll be using this in all of the demonstrations of the seams that I show. Uh, so first thing we want to do, and we're just going to do some small uh, samples here. We're just going to show you how to do an overlapping seam. First thing we're going to do is put a nice straight line down, and then we will, we're going to create a, a, a one inch seam here. Actually, let's just do a half inch seam here. So we'll mark a half inch from the line in a couple of spots and create another line. Nice thing about these soapstone pencils is that uh, these markings will come off uh, with uh, just water over time and you don't need to worry about trying to remove them when you're done. Now Sunbrella really shouldn't be scissor cut. Uh, Sunbrella should be cut with a, a hot knife um, in order to seal the edges to keep it from raveling. But for the purposes of this video we're just using scissors. Okay, I'm going to peel up my, uh, my basting tape, my part number 129, and I'm going to put a strip down. Basting tape is a good idea in any type of seaming. Uh, it helps to waterproof uh, the stitch holes. It also makes sewing a lot easier, and it, uh, yeah, that was my edge, um, and it reduces puckering problems. And we're just going to line that up. And you can see what I mean by simple. This is a very simple seaming approach. All we've done really is just overlap the two pieces of material. And then what you would do on your sewing machine is turn it so uh, one side so you can see the raw edge. And I'm going to do this in a straight stitch and put a stitch roughly an eighth inch inside that edge. And then if you can't see through the material, it's often a good idea to flip it over so that you can see the raw edge on the other side and then sew an eighth inch inside that edge. And that's really all there is to an overlapping seam. Let's talk about some of the properties of the simple overlapping seam. First is it's easy, uh, which we've already seen. Um, it's also strong. Um, it gives you about 90% of the strength of the fabric um, with double stitching in the seam, which is what we've got here. The problem with this type of seam is that because the stitch holes go straight through from top to bottom, it ends up not being as watertight as some of the other seams. Uh, the other issue is, is that because the thread lines are exposed, both top and bottom, no matter which side you put up to the elements, the thread is more susceptible to UV damage over time. So even though it's easy, there are definitely some related issues with this type of a seam construction. Um, the other thing that I should point out is, is that this seam is efficient from the standpoint that given that we did a half inch seam here, it only consumes a half inch of material to create that seam. And that's really everything you need to know about that type. Moving on, we'll talk about the uh, semi-flat felled seam, and this is one of the more popular seams used in the industry uh, for canvas work. Again, I'll give myself a cut line here. And now what we want to do, again, this should probably be heat cut as opposed to scissor cut, because these edges will be exposed, they'll be raw. And now what you would do is you would take your materials, if you had a material that wasn't the same on both sides, which Sunbrella is, but it had a face, you would want to put the material so that it is face to face and then line up the raw edge that you're going to be sewing. This is a case where it's often not necessary to use basting tape, but it's helpful uh, nonetheless. 
So I am going to use the basting tape because we like to treat, train our customers uh, to always use basting tape. And I'm going to line it up right on the edge and rip it here. Ripping it makes it a lot easier to peel up the transfer tape. And then I'd want to cut those ends if I was trying to do this neatly. And that basting tape is 3 8 of an inch wide, 1 2 9. So I want to sew roughly a half inch in because if I sew through the basting tape in this case, I'm going to be left with some of it being exposed when we fold this edge open. Next we go to sewing. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our stitch in roughly a half an inch in from this edge. And if you wanted to use a sewing guide, you could do that here. I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay. Now that first stitch is going to be completely hidden when we're done, which is one of the benefits of this type of a seam, and you'll see that here in a little bit. But basically what I do here is I fold the top layer open and pull it tight to the stitch line. Now what I'm going to do, and you can see, let me show you this from the end view. Now what I'm going to do is top stitch it right here, which means I'm going to be sewing through three layers of material while I hold this open hard. And I want to do that so that my top stitch is about a quarter of an inch away from the seam line there. And there we have it. That will be a very attractive stitch from the top side. Not so attractive from the bottom side, and we still have the raw edges of material exposed on the bottom side. But from one surface, it's very attractive. So what are the properties of the semi-flat felled seam? Well, the seam is nearly waterproof, which is a good thing. Um, it is also a very strong seam. You'll get about 95% of the strength of the fabric out of this type of a seam construction. We only have one exposed stitch line here to the sun, and if this stitch line fails, the hidden stitch will certainly hold the seam together, so that's very good. Um, from a consumption standpoint, this particular seam, if I'm shooting, if I started with a half an inch, it consumes twice that. So this, this stitch consumes twice the init initial stitch width in from the raw edges of the fabric, in this case one inch. So uh, a great seam. We'll move on to full flat felt seams now. Moving on to the full flat felled seam, we're going to cut our material in half, and this time it can be scissor cut. It doesn't need to be heat cut because all raw edges are going to be enclosed. They won't be exposed. And now what we want to do is we're going to again go with a half inch. So we're going to mark half inch on our material. And this time we're going to line up our basting tape right along that half inch line. Okay, peel our tape. And now we want our materials face to face again because of the way it's going to fold out and we line up the raw edge right over top of the line that we drew there, half inch inside. Next thing we're going to do is fold up this top edge and you can base that down if you want, but this is a small enough piece I probably don't have to. And then I'm going to fold out the primary piece like so. And now I'm ready to sew this assembly. Take it to the sewing machine. A little bit more complicated seam to put together. And I want to put a stitch about an eighth inch inside that uh, uh, hemmed edge there. And now we will flip it over and on this side we'll do the same thing. We'll put a stitch roughly an eighth inch inside that hemmed edge. And what we get when we're done is a very nice looking uniform stitch on both the top and the bottom. The properties of this type of stitch, the full flat felled stitch, 
would be that it is very strong. As a matter of fact, it's nearly 100% of the fabric strength because of the amount of material that's rolled into that seam. Uh, the other thing about this stitch is that it's almost completely waterproof. And of course, we've already talked about the fact that it is attractive and neat on both the top and the bottom surface. Probably the biggest drawback is that this seam consumes three times the width of the finished seam. So at a half inch seam here, we've consumed an inch and a half of material to produce this type of a connection between two panels. But if you're interested in spending the time doing it, it's certainly a nice way to build a strong and attractive looking cover. So to recap, any of the three seams that we have demonstrated are suitable for your canvas projects. There are just minor differences and preference calls that you need to make before you select one for your particular application. If you have questions about any of your Canvas projects or any of the supplies that you need, please don't hesitate to call us at SailRight. We're here to help.